The climate Voroshilov series of tanks played a crucial role. In the early stages of World War II, particularly on the Eastern Front. In this video, we delve into details of KV tank series. The KV-1 tank, named after Soviet politician Climate Voroshilov, was a formidable heavy tank designed to provide superior protection and firepower against German armor. Its development began in the late 1930s. Influenced by the lessons learned from the Spanish Civil War and the Soviet-Finnish Winter War, the KV-1 was conceived with a primary focus on heavy armor, aiming to create a tank impervious to contemporary anti-tank weaponry. Its design featured thick sloped armor, providing enhanced protection without compromising mobility. The front armor, in particular, was well sloped, making it difficult for enemy projectiles to penetrate. This design philosophy was a departure from the prevailing belief that tanks should balance armor, firepower, and speed. The tank's armament consisted of a 76.2mm L11 tank gun, offering substantial firepower against both enemy tanks and fortified positions. The combination of heavy armor and a powerful gun gave the KV-1 a considerable advantage over many of its contemporaries. The first prototype of the KV-1 was completed in 1939, and it entered production in 1940. The Soviet industry faced challenges in mass-producing such heavy tanks, but the KV-1's production increased as the war progressed. The tank's production was further boosted by the relocation of several industrial facilities to the east, away from the advancing German forces. The KV-1 made its combat debut during the German invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941. Its appearance on the battlefield surprised the Germans, as their existing tanks struggled to penetrate the thick armor of the KV-1. This early success led to a sense of invincibility surrounding the KV-1, but it also revealed the challenges associated with its weight and mechanical reliability. Despite these initial successes, the KV-1 faced difficulties on the Eastern Front due to the rapidly evolving nature of tank warfare. The German military adapted their tactics, deployed more powerful anti-tank weaponry, and emphasized air support to counter the formidable Soviet tank. The early KV-1 faced mechanical issues related to its weight, leading to breakdowns and maintenance challenges. This prompted a continuous process of improvement and adaptation. The Soviet engineers worked to address the reliability issues, while also introducing incremental upgrades to the tank's design. As the war progressed, the KV-1 evolved into different variants, each incorporating improvements based on battlefield experiences and technological advancements. The tank's design continued to be refined, taking into account the lessons learned from both successes and failures on the Eastern Front. The KV-1 became a key player in significant battles on the Eastern Front, showcasing its strengths and revealing its vulnerabilities. During the initial stages of Operation Barbarossa, the KV-1's impressive armor and firepower overwhelmed German tanks. In the Battle of Rossini I in 1941, a small group of KV-1 South held off the German advance for several days, creating a legendary reputation for the tank. However, the limitations of the KV-1 started to emerge as the Germans adapted their tactics and introduced more potent anti-tank weapons. Despite its formidable armor, the KV-1 faced challenges from long-range artillery, tank destroyers, and air attacks emphasizing the need for continuous improvements. The Soviet designers responded to the challenges by introducing upgraded variants of the KV-1. The KV-1S, for example, featured a redesigned turret for better visibility and reduced weight. These modifications aimed to enhance the tank's mobility and address the mechanical issues that had plagued earlier versions. The KV-1C, another variant, 
incorporated additional improvements such as a more powerful engine, improved transmission, and better suspension. These changes aim to overcome the reliability issues and improve the overall performance of the tank on the battlefield. The KV-1's impact on the Eastern Front was significant. Its presence forced the German military to develop new anti-tank tactics and weapons, leading to the evolution of tank warfare strategies on both sides. The tank's ability to withstand enemy fire provided Soviet forces with a powerful asset in defensive operations. However, as the war progressed and German tank technology improved, the KV-1 faced greater challenges. The introduction of tanks like the Tiger and Panther posed a serious threat to the KV-1, requiring the Soviets to adapt their armored forces. While the KV-1's dominance on the battlefield waned, as the war continued, its legacy endured. The lessons learned from its design and performance contributed to the development of subsequent Soviet tanks. The KV-1's emphasis on heavy armor and powerful firepower influenced the design philosophy of post-war Soviet tanks, including the iconic IS series. In conclusion, the KV-1 tank represented a crucial chapter in the history of armored warfare during World War II. Its early design and concept set the stage for the development of heavily armored tanks, influencing the course of tank design for decades. The KV-1's operational deployment showcased its strengths and weaknesses, prompting continuous improvements and leading to the evolution of subsequent tank models in the Soviet arsenal, despite being eventually overshadowed by newer designs. The KV-1 left an enduring legacy on the battlefield and in the annals of tank development.